Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of Lead Code Daily Challenge, minimum number um, of operations to make array empty. So basically we have this array that has only positive integers, and we have two types of operations we can apply, on any num but we can apply them any number of times we need to. We can either choose two equal values, so two elements of equal values, and delete them, or we can choose three elements with equal values and delete them as well. So either two equal ones or three. And the goal is to return the minimum number of operations of these, one of these, uh, of each of these two that we need to make the array empty. And if it's not possible to make it empty, we can just return minus one. So if we take a look at the first example here, what can happen is we can um, first choose to remove the elements at 0 and 3, so that's this one, 1, 2, 3, and this one, okay? And then we can choose to apply the same operation for the same values again, 2 and 2. So that's two operations so far. And then we can choose to remove maybe, um, let's say, three, the three threes here. So that's one operation, but it's the second type of operation. So we remove 3. And so now we have three operations. And then we can, last one, we can remove these two fours. And so we have overall four operations. Okay? So that's the, actually the most optimal number of operations. And so we return it. Is that if you have only one element, right? Um, so for example, let's say we have three twos, maybe two threes, but one one. So this immediately, if you have one value that has count of one, then immediately you know that you can't make the array empty using just operations of removing twos or threes, um, right? So at that point, you can just return minus one. So that's the first thing. Now, the, the second thing to think about is to just try a couple of counts of occurrences and see how, how would they work, okay? So one example is what if we had like um, one just one twos, so something like this. Well, we know this will take just one operations. What if we have two, three ones that will take two, two operations, just one operation, sorry, the one operation of taking, uh, removing three. Okay, what about if we have four? Well, you could either, if we try to do three, then that's a problem because we'll have one left. So we can't do that, so we'd have to do two. So this is interesting. So we have to do two twos, two of the operation of removing two. Now, what if we have five? Well, if we have five, it's more interesting because in that point, we would have to do three and then two. Because if you try another way, let's say try taking twos, then you would have one left, right? So you can't really do that. You would have to take three and twos. Now, the order doesn't matter, like you can take the last two as threes or the first um, or the first three twos. Um, so you could either do this or do this, right? That doesn't matter really. But this is sort of the core idea here is what we are going to look for. Um, now, if it's, if it's, let's say, maybe something like four. Uh, so four we saw here, it's two operations. So... One thing we can think about it is, what if we think about it just in terms of three, in terms of divisibility by three, not in terms of divisibility by two, just by three and see what we can come up with. So if it's divisible by three, then immediately we know we can just apply that many um, op operations of, let's say operation one is removing two, and let's say operation two is removing three three equal elements. So if it's divisible by three, we can just do the count divided by three operations, right? Of type two, right? But what if, if it's, when you divide it by three, you have one remaining, like for example, this case here, where we have four twos, the count is equal to four. Now in that case, that four modulo three will give you one. So in this case, the, the right thing to do is to do two operations of four. 
Um, so what if, for example, its count is seven twos? So in that case, if count is equal to seven, then modulo three is going to be equal to one. So in that case, what's the optimal choice? Well, one way we can do this is if we take two threes, two three operations of type one, of type two here, then we'd have one remaining, so we can't really do that one. But what if we take three and then just apply the same thing we did here for the remaining four? So that would be something like this. So we'd have three operations, right? Um, and so what this tells you, even if you expand that, let's say maybe to um, maybe 10, right? 10 modulo three is also one. So in that case, let's say two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So we have 3, 5, 3, 5, right? 10. So in that case, let's try it. So if we do this, we do this, we do this, then we have one remaining. So we can't really do that. So the, the last basically operations of 3, we can't do it. So once we have the 4 remaining, we just do two twos. So overall, this is going to be 4. Okay? So that's the main insight is you do up when when a count of three equal to one you do up until you have four elements or basically you have two operations of type one here of removing twos okay and so now we have now we have uh, two things that we know how to calculate uh, the number of operations for if the count modulo three is equal to zero we know that we need to take this if the count of three is equal to one we know that we need to do Let's write it down here. We know that we need to do basically two operations, okay, of type one plus the rest of type three. Okay, so that's for count three equal to one. What's the other option? Well, for divisibility by three, you can either have it equal to zero, equal to one, or equal to two. Those are the only three options. And so the last options we have is if the modulo is equal to 2. So that's the case where, let's say, for example, we have, uh, what's an example of modulo 2? Well, I think 8 here, right? So 4, 4, 4, 4, right? Because 8, 6 plus 2, right? Is 6 plus 2. So that works. So if we try this, let's try and see what works. So if we take 3, just be greedy, three, and then we take the last two. That works, right? Three. We can't do better than this, really. Um, and so for count equal to three, at least from this, what this tells us is that we just need one operation of type one, and then the rest can be of type two, which is taking three at a time, right? Be the the only, only the last operation needs to be uh, one that takes the two remaining, but the rest needs to it can be in terms of three, and you can even think of that just in terms of this. Because what does this mean? This means that you have multiple multiples of three, and then you have two remaining. So for all the multiples of three, just use operation two, where you remove three elements at a time, and then for the last two remaining, you just use operation of type one. Right? That's going to be the optimal solution. So we know here that it's going to be one operation of type one. Right, and then plus the remaining ones um, of type uh, two, right, where we take three. So the remaining ones are here, and this is the one of type one. Okay, and so that's the um, that's the one here. And so now we are done. We know for each case what to do. We know for this case what to do, for this case what to do, for this case what to do, and those are the only possible cases. Um, and so, yeah, from this we can code the solution and make sure it passes. Of occurrences of each element, that's the first thing we need. So let's just create it. So let's ha use collection counter in Python. You can use a hash map if you need to. Um, and now we can just go over the elements and their count, right? Um, and so to get that, we just go through the items. Now we want to check. If the count is equal to one, we know to stop and just return that we can't do it because we can't make the array empty because if it's just one unique ele element, then it's not possible. Now we can go through all the cases we have. So we have modulo three equal to zero. Otherwise we have 
the only in terms of divisibility by three you only have three options divisible by three remainder is one or remainder is two and so that's what we have here either remainder is one or uh, remainder is two we can do else here but i just want it to, to be super clear okay so if the count is modulo three is equal to zero we said that we only need to count so we of course need something to record the total number of operations so let's call it that and that's what we need to return at the end um, and so in this case we only we can add just count divided by three because we will do in each operation we will get rid of three elements right so if we have six we need only two if we have nine we only need three now if the count is equal to one we said we need two operations of type one so we said two operations of type one type one is basically removing let's write that here so type one is removing two elements two equal elements and then two is removing three equal elements okay and so this two operations of type one because we need to keep four uh, four to use operation one um, and then the remaining we can use operation two and then plus the remaining with operation uh, two with type two okay so what this means basically is that we will do um, two right operations and then what's remaining after two well Two operations of type one will get rid of each operation will get rid of two so we'll get rid of four as a result and since we are doing type two for the remaining this is the remaining we need to divide by three so we divide by three that's exactly what needs to happen here so i'll just put the two here towards the end just so that it's easier to read now if the remaining if the remainder is two then what happens in that case well in that case we said we need one operation of type one and then the remaining is of type two and so this means here that we need to do um, one operation of type one and then the remaining which is count minus two because we do one operation of type two that gets rid of two elements and so what's remaining we divide by three right uh, this works and then we can optimize it so, so far, it looks like it's good with the test cases. Let's see. And that gets accepted. Okay, so I think first this one can be optimized here because this is just, if we just distribute it, count divided by 3 minus 4 divided by 3, right? That's what, that's what this is. Now, 4 divided by 3, what is this? This is just 1, actually, right? So that's just 1. Now, if this is minus 1 plus 2, that's just plus 1. Now, okay, so that's for this operation. Now, for this operation, we can do the same. So that's divided by 3, and then minus 2 divided by 3. Okay. So this, is, this one actually is pretty much 0. And so we have plus 1. Okay. And so this tells you already these two are the same. Right, so we can just do this is either in, this is just different than zero because these are the only possible, two possible solutions, right? So in that case, we can remove that, okay? And now, this is actually just the else, okay? Um, and so this should work, um, and looks like it does, okay? Now, these two also, if you look, the only difference between these two is the one, and you have a one if it's bigger than zero, right? So instead of doing this, we could just in remove this and just do, if it's not equal to one, it's just this plus um, one if count. Um, so it's plus one if count is bigger than zero. Otherwise, if we don't add anything, that's exactly what we had. And this can be shortened to just count modulo 3 is bigger than 0 because this would be true and if it's true we will add 1 if it's false we will add 0 that, that's what a conversion of true false to integer will do and because of this plus we'll convert to integer 
And so this should work as well. And if we submit, it does work, right? Um, and that's pretty much all there is to this problem. Um, so that's, um, so this is a lot simpler solution. Um, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. And if you need help, feel free to schedule a session in the link below in Supercare. And see you on the next one. Bye.